God made man. Man is composed of body, physical, intellect and soul. Man has, so to say, a physical body, an intellect and soul. There are great possibilities in man which are endowed by God equally well. But the question remains that we have to develop those possibilities within us. Some have dwelt in one way, the other have dwelt the other way. We have made so much advancement, so far as our physical side is concerned, and along with it our social and political. We have also advanced wonderfully so far as the intellect side is concerned. I did not mention how far we have advanced in that respect. Everybody knows we have learned how to fly in the air. We can see television, we have got radios and others. But both these things, I mean physical body, and intellect are dependent on the soul in which we are, you see. We li know little or uh, nothing about that. We only that know that much what is given in the Holy Scriptures. Those saints who came in the past, they did experience the side of the soul, I might say, and the other spiritually. Those who did experience of their own self, and after knowing their own self, they had the experience of our self. They left us They left us valuable prayers of the experiences which they had with their self and our self, which now exist with us in the form of Holy Scriptures. We are fortunate today in the 20th century that all the saints and the masters who came in the past, they are experiences are with us. We have got a wonderful legacy, you might say, with us. Had we come, say, a hundred years before, we would not have the sayings of Swamiji Maharaj, the latest saint who came in India, and if you still go back, say, about 500 years back, we would not have the Holy Scriptures of the six, which form, I think, over 1400 pages, big sizes. Still further, if you go back, had we come before the time of Prophet Muhammad, say about fourteen years, hundred years back, we would not have the Qur'an before us. Similarly, had we come before two thousand years ago, we would not have the wonderful saying of Christ with us. The point is, whenever these saints came in the past, they gave us the esoteric side of the things the subjective side of the man, you see. What they have spoken just now, they only 
gave a history of the physical side of the show, objective side of it, not the inner man, which is the reality, a real man. Even before you go back, Laura Astor came, you see, Janice, Mahavir came up, Buddha, Lord Buddha came up. Had we come even before those times, you see, he would not have the, their experience with us. I say, if we had come before the times of the old Vedas, the oldest scriptures in the world, we would not have the, those test with us as well. So I say we are fortunate in this 20th century that all saints who came in the past, they have wonderful experiences that they had with their self and with the over self, all of them are with us. Now it remains, there should be somebody who had the experience of that in life and can guide us and help us in having those experiences we they had and we they taught at the time when they did come. The difference lies only in the expression, the mode of expression and the language which are prevalent at the time but the subject matter has been the same. The same thing even now stands, you see. Great is man. <clears throat> there are greater possibilities in man which we have to develop. I have just said that we have developed wonderfully so far as the objective side is concerned, physically and intellectually but we know little or nothing so far as the intellectual side is concerned. Yes. What's the matter? Could you move to the down Because some people can't hear on the bear. I think one, one loud speaker would have done. If we know the inner man, we can see also the very background of it, the over self, the real background of the inner man. So first of all, that question is with us that who we are and what we are. Is this five and six feet high statue which we are carrying, is this the man? Well, this is the outer man. This is the statue which we have to leave someday. Each man has to leave it. And the day is, does come when each one of also has to leave this body. That the inner man which leaves the body, that we have to know. That is why all rishis and saints who came in the past gave out that thing, know thyself. Even the old Greeks had to say that. Not his seated. Guru Nanak and Christ also reiterated the same truth. Well, know thyself who you are and what you are. Those had experience, who had experience of their self, how they had that experience, how they could have had the experience of the old self. They are wonderful, are the valuable experiences we have got in the Holy Scriptures with us. Nowadays we can read those Holy Scriptures, but to understand the right import thereof, we would require someone who has got experience of that inner self and the over self. If you have these holy scriptures from a man with that experience, 
he will you will be able to understand the right import of all those things if you hear the same thing from an intellectual man he will no doubt do his best to interpret things but there may be a place where you will fail very badly for instance i will quote you one instance in all the holy places of all the religions that exist today you will find a common symbol in all of them we got temples which are domed shape like the mans and there you find the little light and also bell ringing of the bell over there in the sikh temples also it is like that in buddhists and jainis also they have got the same symbol in the case of zoroaster you will find they also the unstruck light symbol of unstruck light in the case of the christians also the cathedrals are made no shaped like that t shaped therein also you find candles are lit and bell is going on this is a common symbol which you find in all the i mean churches temples of different social religions <coughs> what do they stand for that's the point that is something common about which we do not know exactly why they, what for they stand for i had a christian superintendent under me when i was in service he was a roman catholic and i asked him when look at her the bishop of lahore in india he was considered to be most advanced intellectually i asked him well, will you go to bishop and ask him what does this these two symbols stand for he went to him and asked him well what does this symbol of the bell going on stands for he replied it is only to call men together we take it all right so far as the church is concerned this may stand for that but in other temples you will find the man who enters the temple he rings the bell so there is some common symbol some symbol which stands for some experience inside about which we know nothing so far you will find here that an intellectual man will feel we are it is a symbol of the sound principle going on in the reverberating in the whole universe and in the body of man this is a symbol which stands for that in almost all religious places so this is what i say we can read the holy scriptures but we cannot grasp the right import of them until we know come across a man who has got experience of the inner self so these are experiences which man had and now also can have if some personality someone who is experienced who has experience of the same thing within and is competent to give you the lighting of the light in all the temples in mosques and churches you will find there's a light of god symbol of the light of god so there's light of god within everybody there is sound principle going on can be heard with every in everybody those who had experience of it when they were asked well have you seen god is there a god what did they reply this question was put to christ and he said behold the lord 
He does not give any reasoning for it. He says, Behold the Lord, it's there. You see it. The same question you put to Guru Nanak in India. Well, is there a God? He says, Yes, He is appearing everywhere. I see Him. You remember the name of Vavekananda who came to America some time back? He was an atheist before. He was challenging everybody. There's, there's no God. If there is, is there any one man who can, who has seen him? So he was just directed to one personality in Calcutta in India. When he went over to him, he asked him, Master, have you seen God? And he looked into his eyes and said, Yes, my child, I see him just as I see you even more clearly. Which are those eyes with, with which that can be seen? Guru Nanak says, those eyes are different with which we can see Him. That eye is in every man, but still closed. We require opening of that eye. In Christ, refer to it, I is the light of the body. Even now, this is an old, old science, as I would say, not new thing which I am just putting before you, but we have forgotten. Now, there is a dire necessity of someone who has got experience of that very thing within himself and is competent to give you first an experience. The qualification of a saint is given by almost all the masters who came in the past who can open, uh, open our understandings, open our inner eyes to see the reality with one's own eyes. Shamastabra is a Mohammedan saint. He says we should be able to see God with our own eyes and hear His voice with our own ears. This is what all other saints did say so. When that question is put to us, is there a God? What we say, what we have to say. We simply say, Bible says so, Quran says so, and other holy scriptures say this and that thing about that thing. As such and such saint has said so, they are correct. But it is they who have said so. What have you to say on this subject? That's the point. Have you got any personal experience with your self? The question of experience with the over self will come only when you know yourself who you are, what you are. At present we are, as it were, the body is itself. We cannot transcend it, we cannot analyze it at will. Unless we know ourselves, we cannot know ourselves. So, self-knowledge precedes God-knowledge. You will say then there are so many people who are believing in God. Excuse me. They have not seen God, so long as they have not seen it, they are not theists in the true sense of the word. I am seeing you, I am theists of you people. I know you are, because I have seen you. We have heard in some people, there is a God. We have learned in Holy Scriptures that there is a God. No doubt, we have got that informal, inform, informal thing, but we have not seen it. Unless we see a thing, we are not convinced. We learn, you see, from the Holy Scriptures, we hear from the saints that there is a God. When we find parallel experiences of so many saints who came in the past, we can take that as an experiment maya 
to take up the subject, but we are not fully convinced until we see the reality with our own eyes. For instance, a sick patient is there. Doctor comes up and says, you got water in your belly. He has not seen the water in the belly, but because an expert man has come up and he says so, the most thing he can do, he will send for a board of doctors. They come up, they all diagnose the same disease. He see, give them intellectually, you see. And the doctors say, well, this operation is very dangerous, you might die. Give us, give, give us in writing, even if you die in operation, we are not responsible. And he gives in writing at the testimony of few of the doctors before him. This is only I mention, by the way, to show there is a God. The saints who came in the past, all holy scriptures, what they say, they are correct. But the question is, so long as we do not see for our own selves, we cannot be fully convinced. Master say, we cannot be convinced even by the sayings of the Masters unless we see that reality with our own eyes. That's the teachings of the old saints in the past. They believe in an experience which we can have today, in this very life. We are not to wait till after death. So this has been the subject before us <coughs> ever since the world began. There are two sides of the religion, you say. One is the outer, objective side, and the other is the subjective side. Objective side are the apravidya, as it is called in the Sanskrit, consists in all outer forms, rituals, formalism, reading of scriptures, visiting holy places, and all other rituals concerned with them. This is the preparation of the ground, elementary steps to be taken up just to create love of God, just to direct or divert our attention from outside and direct to something higher. These are helping factors, but not the be-all and end-all. Be-all and end-all before us is to know ourselves and to contact ourselves. This is a subject which, is, which has been one for all humanity, and still it is the same. You may belong to any social religion. So to have a social religion is a blessing, I would say, God made man, and man, man made social body. Because man is social, he will have to live in some social body. Otherwise, he will have to just create another social body to live on. So that is why when Christ was approached with that question, that the king the, over there wants tribute to be paid, what have you to say on the subject? He said, all right, give unto Caesar's what is Caesar's and what is God's to God. All bodies belong to the social bodies we are born in, you remain there. But your souls are of God. Just know yourself and contact with God. This is a subject with us ever since the world began. This is the solving of the mystery of life. And not until that is solved practically for us, we cannot be at peace. We will be groping, groping, groping for something. When that is known, <coughs> nothing else remains to be known. This is what the Upanishads say. What is that? knowing which all other things are known. Man is satisfied forever, and that is knowing oneself and knowing ourself.
you would ask when what particular sect I am preaching. Well, I am preaching that very subject before you. We are to remain where we are in the, any social bodies we are born, remain there. The teachings of those social bodies are all common. They all enjoy chastity of life, non-violence, not to think evil of others, be truthful, have chaste lives. Chastity is life and sexuality is death. God is in all human beings, in all creation, love all, have hatred for none, and selfless service. These are the five pillars, I would say, which form the ethical life preached by almost all the social religions that exist today. So that is the qualification for a man to go in for the knowledge of self and knowledge of God overhead. Remain where you are, but you are soul of God's devoted to God. So that is why the subject matter before me, I am running only as a school of spirituality. <coughs> spirituality means science of the soul. Just as medical line is the science of the body, all are equally endowed with the same two eyes, two ears, mouth, all limbs, outer form of the man is the same, and inner construction is also the same. And the disease for which we are suffering, that each man's soul is in the control of the mind, and mind is in control of the outgoing faculties, so much so that we have forgotten ourselves who we are, what we are. This is the disease each one of us is having. We have to analyze ourselves, know ourselves, and then know ourselves. This is we have to solve. So I have taken up only the subjective side of the things and putting before you. To be born in a temple is a blessing, I would say, but to remain there attached in a bigoted form, narrow-mindedness, that is, creates more sin than good. So I am only talking from the subject matter of the science of the soul. This is what I have got before me. The Master at his feet had the good fortune to sit in India. He gave me that thing to just create a common ground for all to sit together. I think this is the first of its kind and with all brothers are coming up, those who are really seeking after the truth. So all saints and rishis who came in the past, <coughs> I have respect for all of them. Those who are at present, my respect also goes to them. Those who may come in the future, for them I also have the same love. So I have come as a humble admirer, of all those saints who came in the past, whether in one country or the other, and I respect their teachings. So far as they are concerned with the esoteric side or the subjective side of the thing. As you are the outer side, the objective side, they have got their own forms, their own ways of living and rituals and other things. I have also respect for them, but that I do not take as the be-all and end-all. Be-all and end-all is knowledge of the self and knowledge of the over-self, you see. This is one before us. For that purpose, this platform on which I am speaking today, that is a gathering of the spiritual people, all seekers after truth. So this is the standpoint. I am explaining only to put before you. Some people do ask what sect you profess. And as physically I remain in the form where I am born, 
you are fully have full, I mean, <coughs> charge to remain where you are, remain there. <coughs> Changing of the outer form do not help and won't help. You have to change inner self. You have to know yourself in the over self. With these few words, I have just, as I have said just now, that I have regard for all saints who came in the past, all holy scriptures are mine, and when I read through them, you see, I find the same parallel thought running through them, that the knowledge of the Self and the knowledge of the over Self. I will just quote you, give you some reference <coughs> from different saints, not in one day, try to, in a series of lectures or talks, I will be able to give quoting from one are the other holy scriptures to show you that the inner science of the soul is the same one for all. It has not changed, nature's laws do not change and have not changed. So far we do not know anything for tomorrow, but so far they have not changed. They are always easier and one for us all, you see. I'll just quote one hymn from Kabir first that another from another saint, just from day to day, when we are holding talks here, I will try to give you quotations and references from all, so far as I know, because man cannot claim that he knows everything, but so far as I have gone through these different holy scriptures, and I have found the truth of it that I will lay before you. Now I will... Kabir, Kabir has been a father, I would say, of spirituality in the East. He saints, I just quote to you, he says, these, these saints <coughs> always address the souls, you see, and soul bodies, not to any particular sect or social religion. That's the first thing. These saints always utter, give their instruction to all mankind as a whole. They do not come for any special sect. Of course they are born somewhere, but they rise up so much that all, for them, the all humanity becomes one. They have got one social body of all humanity. So they always address, <coughs> address the souls. Here he says, <coughs> awake, O soul. You find here the word awake is used. It means we are sleeping somewhere. A man asleep does not know what he, where he is, who he is. He sees so many things in dreams while asleep, but he does not know <coughs> the very self who is seeing at the time. When he wakes up, he says, oh, he had a very good sleep, he's got some experience which he cannot know at the time he's sleeping. So where we are sleeping, that's the point. Our souls, you see, under the control of mind. Mind is under the control of the outgoing faculties. We are identifying ourselves with the body so much so that we are asleep from within. We do not know who we are. So this word has been used almost by all the rishis who came in the past. We us say, awake, Arise and stop not until the goal is reached. Where we are sleeping? We are in a delusion, I would say. We are not the bodies, we are the indweller of the bodies, but we see, we look, we behave just as it were we are the body themselves. 
So we are asleep. Awakened people, those who analyze themselves from the body, when they address this soul, look, your soul, why not awake? Why are you asleep? Wake up. The time has come now because this awakening can only come in the body of a man. There is so much creation of God, but of all the man in the highest rung of the all creation. Man is God, you see, intellectual, I mean, discriminative power. He can discriminate between the right and the wrong. So in, man is endowed with that power, and while as a man you can do that much. You can differentiate yourself in theory first and then practically. That much you cannot do in any other form of creation. So master, when they come, they always address, say, all right, awake, why are you sleeping even now? The day has come in which you can wake up. So it is the, in mankind, that you can wake up. You can know yourself. You can know yourself and no other creation. Kabir says, look here, the time has come now, the day has arisen that you have got the body of a man. Now can, you can analyze yourself and know yourself and as such know the over self. So he addresses the soul, why are you asleep? Why not wake up? The day has come. Even now, if you are keeping, keep on sleeping, then when the, this opportunity, golden opportunity you have got now in the body of a man, when that will end, that opportunity will cease. Now he says, well, all right, those who have awakened, who woke up, what did they find? He said they found a very valuable thing within themselves. They knew themselves who they are and what untold treasure of divinity they have got in them. Those who woke up, those who did not woke up, in that case they passed their lives in their life of the senses and, and did come and does come, you see, one day. And when the, this opportunity is gone out of their hands, he simply depends, just sheds two tears and passes out. So he laying stress, why not wake up a soul? You got the body of a man now, it is thy turn to meet God. You have to wake up from the delusion you are in now. You are not the body, you see that you are the body. You behave just like at the body. All holy scriptures say the world is subject to decay and the body is also subject to decay. But what we do, how we be behave, we do see with our own eyes that body like us, we have seen something going out of it which we call soul. So long as that soul is living in this body, this is a living, living and everybody pays respect to us. When that soul leaves the body, well, dust thou out and to dust return it. Or some people carry you to the graveyard or to the cremation place and you are this life sojourn is over. So masters always address the people as in the soul body, to the souls they give their address. He says, if you wake up now, you will find very untold treasure of divinity now existing in you. If you do not wake up, this hidden treasure of divinity which lies in you already, that will pass out. You will not be benefited by that because you have been leading the life of the senses only. You have to transcend them. This is what Kavir says. He says, you have just lost this, this golden opportunity of a man in your life of senses which you are leading. 
almost from morning till evening, you are doing what? You are just doing work in connection with your body, are developing your intellect, and not devoting any time whatsoever to know yourself, who you are, what you are. That's the most important thing, and unfortunately, the most ignored. Now he said that the Lord, with the Lord of all universe, and this is our, and that is our Lord too, Lord of our souls as well. Yes, He is all wise, all wisdom, and you have been simply befooled in the outward sensuous life. You have not diverted from there your attention to see something ha higher which already exists in you. What is divinity? Divinity is the expression of divinity already exists in man. This is no imposition from outside. It is already there. You are divine in nature. But that divinity, that divine nature has been attached so much so to the outer externalism that you have forgotten about the divine in you and your own self. You simply lead the life of the super outer self, you see. Now he says, <coughs> you should have done as a man, you should have prepared for the coming of the Lord to you. For that purpose you had to just know yourself first and then prepare the way for the Lord, but you have not done that. We have done so much, as I've already said, for developing your the physical side, your householdership, your social life and political life. You have also dwelt wonderfully so far as your intellectual side is concerned, but you have done little or nothing to prepare to know yourself and know God. That was man is the opportunity, you see, that you have got in which you could have done that, but you have not done so. So he wakes up, Kabir says, well, wake up, Dear so what are you doing? You have been, he said, like mad, like a madman. Madman does not know what he is doing. You see, he is not conscious of what he is doing. He is doing something always, but he is not conscious of it. People say he is mad, but when you ask him, are you mad? He said, no, I am not mad. Similarly, those who are awakened, they do see we are going like madmen into the outer enjoyment of the outer senses. But when you ask them, are you a madman? Oh, no, I am the most wisest man on earth. So he says, you have lost your opportunity, your so many days in life which you have now, coming some twenty years, ten years, thirty years, fifty years, that past life is you have frittered away, lost in vain. Now wake up and make the best of use, best use of your life now. So for that purpose he says, can they just wake up and see where is your Lord? We have got self, we, we are souls, and God is the soul of our souls, you see. We, we, our souls are directed outside. We have to invert. If we invert, we could have seen Him, you see. We could have seen Him, but inversion we have not learned how to do it. Emerson said, tap inside. Tapping inside means inversion inside. We are leading a life of senses, outer, externalism. So he says, well, look here, just wake up and see where is your Lord. He is with you, ever with you. All holy scriptures say so. All saints who came in the past, they also say so. But why not wake up and see where is your Lord? Is it with you? If you turn your inside only, you would be able to see. When your inner eye is open, you, you will be able to see Him even in all creation, with open eye. But so long as your inner eye is not open, you are nowhere. So that is why He says, wake up and see where is your Lord. That was the main thing, that was the main mission before us in our human birth, 
that we should have known ourselves and known God. You. So ultimately, Kabir says, okay, that God is the very life of your life. Unless you see invert inside, you cannot see Him. So the truth remains that we are not the bodies, we are the indweller of the bodies. When time does come, the time of great final change, which we call death, that does come to all, one and all. Even if we close our eyes to it, even then that would come. You see? Like a pigeon, if a cat coming in front of a table, he closes his eyes, does not cat catch hold of him. Even if we forget, we have leave the body someday. This is no bugbear, I tell you, but it is a fact which awaits every man. Are we prepared for it? That's the point. And what preparation is there to know the inner man with whose presence this body is being enlivened and we move and do all these things out of things. Pity it is we know so much about the body and not the indweller of the body. So all saints who came in the past, they did direct our attention towards that which are the most important subjects and unfortunate the we know little or nothing about it. The most important it is, the mostly ignored we have ignored it. So this was one of the Kabir saying, I just put before you and seemingly another for a few minutes so that I would not take longer time, only to show you that these saints who came in the past <coughs> This is a saying from the fifth guru of the six. He says, look here, when you rise up in the morning, what you do? You simply go on just doing things in connection with the body. You wake up, you bathe, you answer the calls of nature, you do exercise, you take food, go to the avocation you are following, some going to the business, others for service and others for other things. The whole day you spend in that, you earn the money, in the evening you return, you just purchase something required for the household and look after your children, take your food and go to sleep. Again rise up the same thing again. You think that is only visiting the holy places? I mean the churches, temples and others for a little time, hear some sermons, read some scriptures and go back. Reading of scriptures, attending the churches at the temples in the elementary step, no doubt. But that is not the end all, I say. We have to make the best of what you learn in the holy scriptures. We have to live up to it and see those experiences have those experiences which they had in our lives. Unless, when we go to the church, what you say, there is a God. Oh God, have mercy on us, that's all right. Scriptures all say so, there is a God. But have we seen God? That's the point. Unless we see Him, we have got some experience of the great reality, we are not convinced. To see things is something else, to understand is something else, and to read scriptures only, that is something else. So all we are to make the best use of all these things until we come up to the point to see the reality with our own eyes. As all great saints who came in the past, they did say in their holy scriptures like that, Behold the Lord. God is seen everywhere. That inner eye has to be open with which he is seen. That is the third eye in each man. That is called Shivaneta in the Sanskrit scriptures. 
and the nukta is found in the Mohammedans. So that inner eye has to be opened. So he said, this is what all men are doing. And in this uh, delusion, I would say, the end comes all at once, and the man is cut off. The inner dweller of the house is gone. He has been pursuing all along in connection with the body and intellectual attainments. But he has not known himself, so when the time comes all at once to leave the body, he is in a nonplus condition. He doesn't know what to do. He simply repents, just sheds tears, and passes out. That's all. <coughs> so, Guru Arjuna says, well, look here, in this life of delusion as you are following what you should do, he says, just attend. Have the company of somebody who is awakened, who has known himself, who sees the reality with his own eyes. You should attach yourself, have the company of that particular saint before you. What will you gain thereby? You will learn how he has known himself. He will give you first an experience of the self and of the old self, how little it may be, there's no question of quantum, but you will have some experience of the beyond, of your own self and of the old self. If you know that you have that thing in your life now, so by first an experience what you get at the time when he initiates you into the beyond, you can develop that experience from day to day under proper guidance and help. So he says, well, while leading as a man, you should contact somebody who has got, who is awakened, so to say, and who has got first a knowledge of his own self, not in theory, but practically he has analyzed himself to see what he is, and he sees over self with his inner eyes. So that is the way how you can also say, make the best use of your human life. If you do context such like personality, you will enjoy this life and afterlife, both. Then he said, look here, oh man, you had come to make the best use of the life, you see. What does it profit a man if he gains the possessions of the whole world and loses one's own soul? our pursuits in connection with the body and other intellectual ways, that will be only helping factor, but not the end all, be all in life. The end all and be, and be all of life is to know one's own self and the over self. So he says, well, look here, you had come in the world to know yourself. You have been given the body of a man in which you have got the golden opportunity to know yourself and to know ourself in the company of somebody who has known himself. The man who has known himself, he will only be able to give you, enable you to know yourself. For instance, <coughs> if you come to a compounder, he will give you so many recipes given by so many eminent doctors, but he won't be able to make you a doctor. Only a doctor will make you a doctor. Similarly, those who have got only literary knowledge of these holy scriptures, they will be able to give you the literary knowledge, different how they got it, this and that thing. They have not seen the reality with their own eyes, and you won't be able to see that reality unless a man who has seen the reality, he gives you, does give you some experience of it. So he enjoys, while as a man, you may remain in any social body you are, are there, you are welcome to remain over there, but know yourself naturally. You will come to know yourself when you come in contact with somebody who has known himself. This is the thing which has been impressed, impressed by all saints who came in the past. Maulana Rum, a great Mohammedan saint, 
He says, look here, <coughs> if you want to make a pilgrimage of God, what we should you do? You should just accompany a man who has already done the pilgrimage of God. He has seen the place. If you just go along with him, you need not even read the Holy Scriptures because he has seen the place about which the Holy Scriptures speak of. He will simply lead you there. He daily goes over there. He will also lead you there. there who, who should be a such pilgrim? He says. Let him be a Hindu or a Mohammedan or a Arabic or anybody, A, B, or C. That doesn't mind. You want to be a doctor, you see. It is not necessary the doctor should be a Hindu or a Muhammad. He should be a doctor. Full knowledge of the physical body. Those who have got that knowledge, naturally in their company you will know that very knowledge yourself practically. So first and foremost thing is just to seek the company of somebody who has got the first knowledge of the self and the over self. Name him by any man you like, where he lives, whether he is in India or abroad or America or Europe, that does not mind. He may belong to Christians, he may have been born in Hindus, he may have been born in Sikhs, or Zoroastrians, or anywhere. The man who has got the first and experience inside, only such man is wanted to be contacted, with, only to have the contact with it. So he presses the heart, <coughs> look here, <coughs> you had come to just make the best bargain out of a man's life. What does it profit a man if he gains the possessions of the whole world and loses one's own soul? So soul life, science of the soul, that you have to study and have it. What are you doing? You say, you are just engaged in very trifling matters. To awaken man, all these things become trifling. They do follow these lives, I mean, they do not educate to live the life, worldly life, and go out. But they do say as comparative. Comparatively, soul life is the high most. That's the main subject or the main mission of one's life, to know oneself. Why are you engaged in so trifling things? He says, <laughs> you had come to know yourself and know God. Then what are you doing? For the sake of satisfying your appetites, you are killing. Kill not. This is what Christ, this is one of the twelve commandments. This is also one of the commandments of the Buddha and almost every other saint. Kill not. So you are after killing everyone. He says they are just as you are. They have got life in them. They have feelings. Why you injure their feelings? The one living in you is also residing in that one as well. So you must have, if you have love for God, you must have love for all creation. To love God it means to love humanity and to love all creation. If you love, you have love for God and no love for the creation or for humanity, do you mean, is, is it love for God? No, not the least. So this is what he is pressing here. They are just like as you people are, so just behave. One great commandment, kill not, strike not. Lead the life of non strict viol non violence in mind, word and deed. This is the first thing. The point is God lives in everywhere and you love him, the same love lives in everybody. You must behave that body as also as God, you see. God is already existing there. These are the commandments which we are not caring for, and there is trouble, trouble arising from day to day. Further, he says, if you want to liberate yourself, to know yourself, to fulfill the great mission before you, you simply do something just to contact with somebody who has known himself and the old self. What will he do? He will simply contact you with the divine divinity already in this in you. He will invert, he will show you how to invert inside and contact the divine word already in you. This word 
is a connecting link between man and God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word was God. So that power, whole world, there was no world when the, there was Word, you see. The same thing has been expressed by all other saints in their own ways, by expressing in their own words, but there is a God in action power, you might say, just to understand. That God in action power lives in everybody, and that is the support of our life in all creation. If we invert and contact with that, that is the way back to God. Expression of that divine word in two ways. One, you see the light within and you hear the sound current within. And these are the two ways back of the same God. And the expression of one reality supporting all creation. So his job that Divine man, I would say, are this master soul who is competent to give you an experience of that divine word within you. He will open your inner eyes. You will see the light within. You will require no testimony for that because when you see things for your own self, you have the necessity of a further testimony. Man is fully convinced. So this is the qualification of a saint given by Kabir and all else, Kabir says, who is competent to remove that curtain from your eyes to enable you to see the light of God within and enable you to hear the voice of God reverberating throughout all creation. Such a competent man is expressed by the word saint. Nowadays we take Saints are simply well versed in literature, are holy scriptures. Where saints don't define a man in that way, saint in that way, who has got the practical experience of the higher self, of his own self and the over self, and is competent to give others that divine contact. Only such a man is termed <coughs> as saint, in the words of the teachers, mankind, who came in the past. Now he says, look here, this body which you are wearing on, that you have leave someday. For this maintenance of this body you have got outer buildings. Well, look here, you have to leave this body one day, all the outer environments in one day, where you are, after all, when you leave, you have to go somewhere where you do not know. If you know how to leave this body in a conscious state, you will be able to know two things. One, how to transcend the body, leave the body at will. At the time of death, you have to simply shake off this body. That's all. Saint Plutarch says, as at the time of death, the soul experiences, has experiences, at the time of death, those very experiences a man has when he is just initiated into the beyond. Man has to analyze oneself. At the time of death, soul leaves the body. And the Master does, does teach you how to transcend the body the very first day. Where the world philosophy and there the true religion starts. The true religion means way back to God starts from where you transcend the body, you see. So he says, look here, the house, the dwelling house in which you live in this body, this is the dwelling house we live in, that you have lived someday. And you are engaged the whole time in maintaining this body and its environments, and knowing nothing about yourself, who you are and what you are. I remember an incident at Lahore, when I was at Lahore in India, one grown-up child of a man, gentleman died and took, they took the, his course to the cremation place. They asked me to give a talk at the time. I told them, well, look here, the subject matter of your sermon at this moment is just lying before you. 
Air is something which has left this body and this is dead body now. And that very thing still exists in you. Are you prepared for this change? If you are prepared, well and good. If not, just do that. This is the subject, you see, before us as a man problem. We have to solve it. In the company of the saints, they give us the very first and experience how to transcend the body. Their ABC starts only from there, not in reading of the scriptures only. These are the elementary steps, not alone attending the holy places of the different sects. These are the elementary steps. The whole thing starts from there. These are the way, paving, paving the road to spirituality, you might say. Spirituality does not mean in following only the rituals and forms of the sex, but it only consists no to know oneself, to know the science of the soul direct, to know oneself and know ourselves. This is strictly speaking, this word spirituality denotes. But we have confounded it with only the observance of the outer forms and rituals. I have regard for those, because those are the elementary steps. A man reading the first class of the third primary, naturally he has to have recourse to the books and everything. But when he is grown up, he becomes the master of arts, he doesn't need any pen or paper to write on, to start with. So these are the elementary steps. We have regard for those things. And you are fortunate you stand somewhere, but I would only ask you to be sincere, to be sincerely after what those teachings, those saints, those sects tell us to do. They all enjoy to lead a clean, chaste life. They all enjoy to have a life worth living, you see. Just be of help to man, all humans serve all humanity. So that is to be followed. First, the ethical life is stepping stone to spirituality, but that is also the way leading up to spirituality. The masters in Jain, very impressively, I say, well, look here, you are a man, you have to leave this body someday. Are you doing anything to know yourself by self-analysis? If you do that, this thing of death is gone. You have no fear of death. Because you have passed that stage, what is called death. You daily die and go up. Did not Saint Paul say, I die daily? Every saint who came the path, they did say so. This is a science, old, old science, but we have forgotten, unfortunately, I would say. So Guru Arjuna here, in giants that thing, he looks and look here, this body you have to leave someday. Why not just turn your attention to the one who is leaving the body, who is enlivening the body? You see. If you know yourself, that is the knowing of the self, of the inner man. We know outer self, no doubt. We all know, we are, as it were, become the outer selves. We have no knowledge of the inner man left. But without that, man is nowhere. Time must come. No exception to the rule. One has to leave the body and go. At the time he will be nonplussed. Oh, where is he going? Who is going? He simply sheds tears and repents and goes. That's all. Would it not be better if in this life, very life, have the same experience of the beyond? In the company of those who have that experience and are competent to give you that experience. So this is what he is enjoying. He says, wherever you have to go after after leaving the body, you have to go somewhere. Where you have to go, if you have got experience of that, of the beyond, even now, I think at the time of death, you would say, like Kabir, the word that, you see, so the awe, you see, fear into the mind of everybody. But Kabir says, when he hears the name of death, I am overjoyed. Why? He says, I got experience of the beyond. I die daily, hundreds of times in a day. 
So this is subject matter before us. This is what Guru Arjuna, all other saints have been enjoying. Muhammad is also, they say, die before you die. This is what Christ also said. Except ye be born anew, you cannot have this, see the kingdom of God. This is born, to be born anew into the beyond. Whosoever shall lose this life shall save it. And whosoever shall save this life shall lose it. No reference to the always there. I am telling you as I have already said, no new things. But at least the revival of the old, old truth, which we have forgotten, and that requires revival. Further he says, <coughs> now as it were, can we transcend the body at will? That's a question further arises. He says, yes. When? How? When you meet some master, sit at the feet of some master, who is comp who has that experience and is competent to give you some experience at the very start. We can leave the body even now, at will. This may appear as a rigmarole now, but is a hard fact. All saints in the past have given out that way, and even now, with the grace of my master at whose feet I had the good fortune to sit, this experience can be had even now. With His grace, science cannot die out. This remains as ever. Then He says, Can anybody help us in having this experience? He says, Look here. All through the world, he says, he has sought for such a personality here, there, and everywhere, but he found the feet of the Master only where he could learn this subject, had the first experience of analyzing oneself and over self. So this is subject matter, one for all as a man. The mystery of life has to be solved irrespective of to whatever <coughs> cause, creed, or color we belong. That makes no difference. We are born in the same way, all leave the body in the same way. All endowed with the same privileges from God. It is not that for one sect you have got one privilege, for the others they are not equally. There is no difference between color or race, nothing of this sort. You are all men. Man has the same construction outside and inside. It is not that Hindus have got four eyes and the Christians have not got. All have got two eyes, the same intellect, the same mind, the same outgoing faculties, and the same soul. Simply they have to liberate their soul from the bondage of mind and matter and know oneself in life. If they do so in the company of somebody who knows it, who is living, living that life and is competent to give you first an experience of that life, in his company you will also be able to experience that way. So this has been the subject before us ever since the world began, as I tell, told you just now. We have been forgetting this much. Saints have been coming from time to time to, to revive this old, old truth. Again, when they went away to arrange human, we forgot it. Even today we stand in the same way. You see, ever since the world began, when it started, well, nobody knows, I would say, there's some estimation of the fact, some four billions or something like that the world began, but that is only an estimate of the world after the last, what you say, parla dissolution, last dissolution. There have been so many dissolutions and grand dissolutions, who knows when the world started. 